Hello chemists and welcome to Bale's Chemistry. This is my first episode of topic 1.2, Amount of Substance. This topic is particularly fundamental to all of chemistry and appears on both paper one and paper two in your final exams. If you're new to the channel, my videos are here to help make your A-level chemistry that bit easier by providing you exactly what you need to know. If you haven't already, consider hitting the subscribe button so you get to see the videos when they're released. So in this episode, we're looking at the mole and how it links to masses. The mole is a unit of measurement used for measuring out quantities of different substances. It's defined as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. It was previously linked to oxygen and hydrogen, and it now has the value of 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Several chemists were influential in establishing what we now know as Avogadro's constant. It was named after Avogadro because of his work on gases. Although the mole can sometimes be seen as a complex topic, it's just a word that's used to describe a number. If you have one mole of something, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of those things. The mole is linked to the relative atomic mass of an element, so if you have one mole of carbon-12, it has a mass of 12 grams. It's the same as the relative atomic mass. And if you have one mole of sulphur, you have 32 grams of sulphur. We can calculate the number of moles of any element using this equation. This can be simplified to n equals m over mr. If you struggle to rearrange the equations, it can be simpler to place them in an equation triangle, allowing you to cover the required value, leaving you with the calculation you need to carry out. It's important that you remember to always put mass in grams into this equation. So we can rearrange the equation to give all three values. That's relative molecular mass, moles, and mass. When it comes to calculating the moles in a solid, we can look at three different examples. In the first example, we're asked to calculate the number of moles in 27 grams of H2O. We'll first take our equation, number of moles equals mass over MR. We'll substitute in the mass of 27 grams at 18, which is the MR for water, to arrive at 1.5 moles of water present in this sample. In our second example, we're asked to calculate the mass of 1.25 moles of C2H6. We'll start off by looking at our equation, M equals N times MR. We'll substitute in our values, 1.25 moles and 30, which is the MR of C2H6, to arrive at an answer of 37.5 grams. In our third example, we're going to calculate the MR of a compound where 1.3 moles has a mass of 83 grams. To do this, we'll use the equation MR equals M over N. We'll substitute in our numbers of 83 and 1.3 to arrive at an MR value of 64. We can now take a look at the reaction of aluminium with oxygen to form aluminium oxide. This is where aluminium reacts with oxygen to make Al2O3, aluminium oxide. This is a simple reaction, but as it's shown here, it does not obey the conservation of mass law. This means the mass of the reactants must equal the mass of the products. So we're going to go back to the equation and balance it, adding in more aluminium, more oxygen, and more aluminium oxide. The equation is now balanced and is represented as 4Al plus 3O2 makes 2Al2O3. This balanced equation displays the stoichiometry, which is the ratio of reactants and products in the chemical reaction. The ratio is important for when we try to calculate the amounts of products produced in a reaction or the amounts of reactants required. Taking this reaction then, we're going to look at a common practice question. We're asked to calculate the mass of aluminium oxide when 270 grams of aluminium is reacted with an excess of oxygen. To answer this question, we'll first start off by calculating the number of moles of aluminium. To do this, we'll look at the number of moles equals mass over MR. We'll then substitute in the numbers to get a value for 10. We then need to work out the ratio of aluminium to aluminium oxide. In this case, it's four to two. Using this ratio, we can work out the moles of aluminium oxide. The simplest way to do this is to divide the number of moles of aluminium by four and then multiply it by two. This leaves us with five moles of aluminium oxide. In the final step, we'll convert the number of moles to the mass of aluminium oxide. To do this, we'll multiply the number of moles by the MR of aluminium oxide, which gives us 510 grams. A chemical reaction finishes when one of the reagents is used up. A limiting reagent is the reactant which is used up first. This causes the chemical reaction to stop. To calculate the limiting reagent, we're first going to calculate the number of moles of each of the reactants. We're then going to compare these using the reaction stoichiometry, and then we're going to identify the reagent which is used up first. When it comes to calculating the moles of a product formed, we always go off the limiting reagent. We'll look at this reaction as an example of calculating the limiting reagent. We have 0.6 moles of Fe2O3 has been reacted with 0.8 moles of carbon monoxide, and we're asked to identify the limiting reagent. We're going to first start off by looking at the reactants in the balanced equation. 
Here we can clearly see that iron oxide reacts with a carbon monoxide on a ratio of 2 to 3. So our 0.6 moles of Fe2O3 will need 0.9 moles of CO to fully react. As we only have 0.8 moles of carbon monoxide, that will be our limiting reagent. Let's go ahead and summarise this episode on moles and masses then. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to 23 particles. The moles of a solid can be calculated using N equals M over MR. The stoichiometry of reaction shows the ratio of reactants to products. When it comes to calculating reacting masses, we start off by finding the moles of the known and then using the stoichiometry to calculate the moles of the unknown. And finally, the limiting reagent is the reagent which will be used up first and stop the chemical reaction. That's it for this introduction to topic 1.2, amount of substance. If you found the video useful, send us over a like. And if you have any questions or just want to say hi, please put a comment down below. Thanks for watching.